This video on owl pellets is presented to the Petaluma Wetlands Alliance trainers with the help of Tim and Helen. Helen! Hi! Hi! Hi. I'm so glad you're here to learn a little bit about owls. I I'm, hope I could teach you something. I'm really interested to know how to do this. Yeah, so that'll be good. Here's where it starts. Okay. This is some of the equipment, or all of the equipment that we'll, we'll be using. We have a great big box, mm -hmm. and in this great big box are tools that we use, measuring, gla uh, measuring rulers, mm -hmm. and a magnifying glass if you need them, and little tweezers if you use them, but we discourage the use of the tweezers. Okay. They get too wound up in detail if you use the tweezers. Okay, what's on, what's on the top of the box? What's on the top of the box yeah. is, yeah. Oh, okay. is right. an outline of yeah. kind of what we're doing. Right, and that's in the manual too, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's so, in okay. the manual. But great, it's on the box, you got it right there in the park. Yeah. Yeah, good. This is the equipment we use. Wow. Now, the non-instructional part of this is, this is with with two or three docents doing this. Mm -hmm. The one docent will be preparing the lecture part mm -hmm. and getting uh, the, the the props that he needs, the mm -hmm. pictures, mm -hmm. and the dissection charts, and the uh, uh, the bone charts. Okay. We'll be getting all of that in order and ready to use. Mm -hmm. The other docent that is not lecturing mm -hmm. will be preparing trays, putting the trays out for one tray for each student. We'll be putting these little dishes uh, for use in there when they get an owl pellet. They're unwrapped. That, that your job would be to unwrap them and uh, put one pellet per tray, mm -hmm. or in some cases a half a pellet per tray, mm -hmm. but not in the dish. Okay. We want them to take the pellet apart and just put the bones in the dish. Right. Carefully save this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that and gets recycled, I'll bet. I'll bet it yeah, does, I'll bet yeah. It does. I'll bet it gets used again, yep. And th there will vary between four and five of these trays up to ten, depending okay. on how big the class is. Okay. Because this is so much handier than when the lecture is stopped, then we don't have to interrupt the flow of the event mm -hmm. to get them ready. We just go right from lecture to the actual dissection of okay. the uh, of the parts because it, it follows so much better yeah. and doesn't they don't get bored in the process. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. That there for now. Mm -hmm. This these are the instructional aids that we use. Mm -hmm. Picture of the barn owl. Great. Helen, do you know why we study the barn owl? Um, well, I was just talking to you about this, and one reason we study the barn owl is because they're here. They're part of the park. That's the one we have so right here. So we're learning about the park, so we'll learn about the barn owl. And some of you who have already been on the habitat walk have seen the, the barn owl boxes, and mm -hmm. some of you who haven't been on that walk will see them. Mm -hmm. What makes this guy so identifiable as a barn owl? Hmm. Well, he has a, a beautiful white head, beautiful eyes, um, probably his size. He's hanging on here, and it looks to me like his head is kind of turned sideways mm -hmm. from his body. He can move his head 180 degrees. Wow. So you can't turn them all the way around like some people used to think, yeah. but he can turn it 180 degrees. So he can actually be sitting in this direction and look straight behind him. Wow. This heart-shaped face is very much of a of a uh, identifying characteristic of him. Mm -hmm. hmm. Here's a okay. kind of a naked view of the uh, yeah. owl. What do you know? There's some things on this picture that are very important to the owl. What do you notice first? Well, what is unusual? Well, I would notice the eyes, but I'm wondering if the um, third graders would notice that first. That really stands out to me, but, you know, it's kind of an interesting picture. You don't see a skeleton picture very much. No. So. And I like to start with the eyes. Okay. 
the eyes are so big yeah. that they can't turn in the socket. Oh, okay. So that's why they have to be able to, with this big long neck, mm -hmm. they have to be able to move their head from side to side or up and down mm -hmm. to okay. see. They can see in very dim light, but it's not their primary hunting tool. Mm -hmm. Over here on this picture, mm -hmm. there's this yellow arrow mm -hmm. pointing at a hole in the side of his head. Mm -hmm. That's his ear. Hmm. His ear is his primary hunting tool. Hmm. And can the children see that pretty well? I mean, you have to point that out. You really well have to point it out yeah, very well. Yeah, yeah, it's a small arrow. Yeah. Okay. This beautiful white face is actually dish shaped. Hmm. And what it does, it focuses sound to his ears that are right over in here. Mm -hmm. His ears are the most acute ears of any animal. In the animal kingdom. Any, 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 any animal, they can wow. hear more acutely than anything wow. else. Wow. More than dogs. More than dogs. <laughs> They're so acute that they can hear a mouse walking in the grass, just walking, uh -huh. 50 to 60 feet away while he's flying. Wow. Hmm. And not only that, because his ears face on the side of his head mm -hmm. in two different directions. One ear faces down, one ear faces up. If he turns his head, he can triangulate uh, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. spot that mouse or rat from 50, 60 feet away mm -hmm. and jump on it without ever seeing it. He could, he could conceivably do it with his eyes closed. Yeah. It's that very much accurate. He can also focus the sound. This this white rough, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he can change the pitch of those feathers to focus sound to his ears. Wow. Yeah. So when you're talking to the um, children about this, they they are they're probably really when you talk about a little mouse in the grass and that the owl can hear that. How do they react to that? Do they do they get it? I mean. Yeah, they gen the mouse in the grass generally yeah, gets it. Yeah. I used to have. A mouse, a cardboard <laughs> mouse that I painted fluorescent red and I measured 50 feet and I didn't say anything about it first, but then yeah. I, when we get to this point, see that's how far away it is that uh, the owl can accurately tell where his prey is. Wow. And he also has these things that are down here, Helen. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. know what those are? Mm -hmm. What those do we call them? Those are talons. Those are talons, right. and that's how he catches right. his food. Right. He does this. Now, you've studied about other raptors in, in class in the class, yesterday. That's right. And other birds, mm -hmm. other birds especially, they uh, will come along, peck, 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 and get their food by biting on it. Mm -hmm. The raptors are the exception to that rule in that they catch the food first with their feet mm -hmm. and then they eat it. Yeah. A sparrow and would pick up seed and eat it directly. And in the classroom, and do you remind them? Because in the classroom, they will have done that with the yeah. different different tools that they that birds eat with. I try to remind yeah, yeah. them. And they, yeah. yeah, okay. That the raptors are different. Yeah, okay. And this guy, as we will see in real soon, he can swallow his food whole. Mm. Now, why do they swallow food whole? Mm. So it won't get away. <laughs> <laughs> now, you learned this yesterday. Yeah. What don't they have? Do they chew their, first of all, let me ask you, do they chew their food up? No. Why don't they chew their because food? Because birds have wings, feathers, and no teeth. No teeth, no that's teeth. exactly right. <laughs> so, here is our owl. And he starts by catching the famous Schollenberger red rat. There it is. Yep, there he is. Mm -hmm. Now, the only place that this, I'm very careful about telling him this because I don't want him out there looking for a red rat. I said, this red rat only lives on this piece of paper. Mm. <laughs> he catches his rat with his beak. Mm -hmm. He swallows it whole. Why does he swallow it whole? Because he doesn't have any teeth. The other neat thing about this is they always swallow in one direction. They swallow it head first mm -hmm. every single time. Do you know why they swallow it head first every time? Well, I in the park I've heard you describe this. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And the child, the kids, they get it. They figure it out once you describe this. Right. Yeah, because the that goes with the 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 uh, the fur right. or with the with the hair. Yeah. You've petted your dog or yeah. your cat, and you mm -hmm. pet head to tail. It's smooth. Mm -hmm. If you go the other way, it's rough and it will hang up in their throat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they swallow it head first, and it goes down in here. You can see this picture better. There's two stomachs. This first stomach down there where the red is mm -hmm. has all the digestive juices and he takes and cleans all of the soft tissue off of those bones mm -hmm. and that fur. And he does that because he can't digest bones or fur. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea how long it takes to do that? Well, it must be pretty quick. Half an hour. Because he's got to get it out of there, right? Yeah. yeah. Has to move it on to the second stomach. Mm -hmm. And where the real final digestion occurs and the extracting of the nutrients. Mm -hmm. He can get it that far in a half an hour. Mm -hmm. So what's wound up is the second stomach has the nutritious part and the first stomach has the frozen fur and the bones that he can't digest. Mm -hmm. And he collects those in any one pellet. We can have up to six animals that he's eaten. Wow. And he collects those until he can't hold anymore, hmm. and then he regurgitates. Spits it out. Yeah. yeah. But in the meantime, all of this material has passed through, and you have any idea why he does that? Why he particularly acts that way? Why? Why, he, why his digestion works so fast. Oh. Well, he's only got a limited amount of time to get his food. He, can, he hunts at night, right? Yeah. So he's got to get it all in a short amount of time. Yeah, he has to get it all in a short amount of time. And can you imagine if he f was flying around and he has six rats in his stomach? He would be pretty lethargic. Yeah. It keeps him agile. Hmm. Keeps, him, keeps him hunting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the night, Usually at the end of the night, when he goes back to his box or his roost, mm -hmm. he will finish consolidating the pellets and the bones and then regurgitate. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's it okay. on, the, on those pictures. Okay. Now, there are all of these pictures of the rat and the mouse, the shrew, and a vole and a mole. Okay. The vole is so common, I call them owl candy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. These I don't show as part of a lecture. If you're doing a, a, a dissection, you come across with vole. Helen, do you know what a vole looks like? And then I'll get the picture and show you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't take up the time. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, they, and then they've got something to connect it to anyway. Yeah. It's more interesting when they're... Yeah, otherwise it's a little bit boring just right, to listen right. and drool on. Another picture. Right. Of the, yeah. Okay. Okay. So first we do the information about the owls and the pellets, and then we do... Then after the that, you're going to pass out the pellets, okay. the trays, and we're all prepared all right. with the pellet. All right. And that's what we hand out to each student along with... I thought I had that one. He's ready. So we'll use this one. Every student will get, or every two students will get a chart here. Okay. And this has a rat, a vole, a mouse, a shrew, a bird, and hopefully a, a mole. Okay. And the thing that you have to do when you start, you, why don't you go ahead and pull that apart? Break that apart. Just using your fingers. You won't break. You won't ruin too much. You get a little rough. Oh, I see some bones. Oh, yeah, but you whoa. need special bones. You have to keep tearing Ooh, apart. What's in there? The great identifying thing Ooh. are teeth. Okay. So we have to get something with teeth. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, look at this. Perfect. Look at that. Oh, yeah. You got look a. Look at uh, that. Here is a pretty intact skull. Oh, wow. You, you could. Maybe this one you could use for a model, even. Oh, we've got so many of those. Oh, but it's so beautiful, too. <laughs> I have boxes, too. <laughs> boxes of skulls. Look at this. This is yeah, great. Now what, so now, here are the 
here are the uh, you can you can see the teeth and um, the the big fr front teeth. Uh -huh. Now, oddly enough, and maybe not oddly, we don't use those big incisor teeth for the identification. Okay. So there's just something kind of neat to look at. All right. This happens to be the the skull along with. Well, it's kind of it would go. It's been moved around, obviously. But the lower jaw would fit in there like that. Okay. But now that you have teeth, yeah. we can decide what kind of teeth you have. And generally speaking, there are three different types of teeth that we find in these animals. Mm -hmm. We find uh, lobed teeth, as we have here. Mm -hmm. And the lobed teeth are kind of rounded. And they, uh, they come with the rat or, or the mouse. Mm -hmm. So we, this is... so. Uh, can they use, th th there's three kinds of teeth yeah. here? Okay, so you lobed, have lobed teeth here. Uh -huh. And you're generally going to have a rat when you have lobed teeth. Uh -huh. We don't find very many mice. I don't know why that is, but mm -hmm. no mice. Okay. And then, if you have another an uh, animal mm -hmm. with the teeth, would look like they zigzag back and forth. Yeah. I've, Those yeah. are angled teeth. Okay. So that way, this case, you know that you have a rat. A rat. If you had an angle teeth, uh -huh. you would know that you have a vole, because nobody else has an angle teeth. Okay. Or if you found a, an animal with little tiny, tiny, tiny pointed teeth, mm -hmm. that's a shrew. Wow. And if you found an animal with bigger pointed teeth mm -hmm. and teeth the full length of the jaw, if you notice, most of these teeth don't come full length of the jaw. No, they don't. If you had one with full length of the jaw, more oh, pointed, wow. that would be a mole okay. and pointed, but more uh, uh, larger points than on the uh, shrew. Yeah. And then the bird, of course, you'll see the bird and the beak and everything. Mm -hmm. So probably um, it's good when I'm starting out to do this that I... Um, how can I learn what all these are? I mean, it's uh, well. As you get so, going through there, yeah. you will find more bones. Okay. And the trick, the trick hey, is. Ooh, this is big. Yeah, that's a nice that big. Now big. you know you have lobe teeth. Yeah. And we know that that's the rat. Right. Now what so, you do is take that bone there and just go up and down this chart in this co column, the rat column. Mm -hmm. Find a bone that looks a little bit like that. So that one looks a little bit like. Yeah. That. So that's okay. the upper leg to a rat. Okay. And I and generally so, like to leave you, if, if you're not sharing charts, yeah. I'd like you to leave it like that until we're ready to end this segment. Okay. Here's some oh, more. There's yeah, some, these yeah are, those are good bones these there. These are, wow, look at this. This has got... Yeah, that's a very important bone. That's what does got that the, look like? Well, it looks, it looks like another leg. I yeah. mean, it looks like this leg. Yeah. With a very thin... Bone That's the it. lower leg. Mm -hmm. So you have the upper leg and the lower leg. Ooh, and look at this one, Tim. Ah. Woo, whoops. <laughs> yeah, they, they do break. <laughs> it was a hip. It's still a hip, but it's yeah, a Yeah, but he came apart. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, this is like the whole animal is in here practically. And you know where these go. Mm-hmm. All because you know what kind you of teeth. You know what it was, yeah. So you wouldn't take this bone and put it over here. First of all, it's too big for a shrew. Mm -hmm. Second of all, yeah, it, the, it's the wrong kind of teeth to yeah. go with the, the, the lower upper leg on the animal. Yeah. So this is really exciting, that, and I'm, I'm, uh, I can imagine that for for the children, this is very exciting. Yeah, yeah. it is. They really get uh, into it. Yeah. So as an aside, it's been my experience. That I'm not touching that. <laughs> and who says that? You think it would be the little girls? It's the little boys. Oh. The girls will be that way somewhat. Yeah. But the little girls will see this occurring and everybody having fun. And it, 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 two minutes it. later, they're into it up to their and elbows. So what, so what do you do with parents? Because um, they might be a little squeamish too. And there will be several parents with each group. So do you... Ask them, I mean, how, how are they with this activity? Do they? Very interested. It, 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 usually it's a matter of keeping the parents away from here. Oh, 
helping their specific their their child. Yeah. Oops. Here's a, oh here's and, the uh, If we're lucky, we have two docents. Yeah. Right. And then the leader docent. The, the team leader. The, the, the team part? overall okay. team leader okay. will have time, uh -huh. and it's really important that if there is time for that team leader yeah. to get in here and help. Okay. And so we'll be circulating around the table, mm -hmm. helping identify and helping getting them in the right columns and everything, okay. and muscling the parent out of the way. <laughs> okay. Gently. They, they really. The, <laughs> some guys just can't wait to get their fingers on it. Right. If we it's have silly. pellets, like yeah. if I have a half a pellet, yeah. and if there is time, yeah. I said, here dad, knock your lights out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it works out fine. Yeah. They really, they don't get squeamish. Hmm. So these go into uh, a plastic bag, and that's something, um, that's the so you have, extra a, you have a plastic bag with the child's name on it, right. and there, and what, so, so if we put this in here, we would write Helen and we would write Rat. Rat on there. Okay. And that's something that the team lead, the overall team leader is going to have okay. time to so do. So these go in here. And. All right. Helen, and Rat. the name. And then we don't give those back to the student. Right. We give those to the, we save them up, yeah. give them to the teacher, uh -huh. and the teacher will use them in the classroom and hand them back. Okay, so the teacher decides, they go back with the teacher, the teacher decides what they're going to do with them. Right. Yeah, okay. Wow, that is really it's fun. exciting. It's fun. It's, it's really, really fun, fun. When, the, when the student gets really excited yeah. doing it. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. Well, this is such a great uh, model for a rat. Wow, so many of the... I forgot to mention <coughs> to you. These pellets come, they come like this, because mm -hmm. we do this. We collect them, we sterilize them. Right. These are sterilized, so you're not going to catch some rare exotic disease. Mm -hmm. And then they're wrapped up to keep them clean. Okay. Um, it's also important to stress the fact that this is not owl poop. Yeah. It's an owl pellet. Yeah. Okay. So right. now we're going to be collecting all of this up. Okay. And when this is pretty well collected up, mm -hmm. then we do a very special activity. Crunch. <laughs> we have this very special thing oh, for you, yeah. Helen. Yeah. What lives in here? <laughs> it's the owl. Wake up, Barney. <laughs> this is Barney the barn owl. Great. He's Barney because that's what I named him. Mm -hmm. And this, I see the sign here says, um, Treat with great respect. And, yes. and the docent has to control this at all times. At all times, yes. Okay. The docent. Oh, they're so beautiful. Should. I hold them like this. Mm -hmm. And I encourage you to take a couple of backs of your fingers mm -hmm. and feel how soft that is. That's kind of important. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Is this a little one? Is this a smaller one? This is a smaller one, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't turn loose of this at all. I also point out the really sharp talons. Mm -hmm. They can put their finger on it, mm -hmm. but don't don't twist her. Mm -hmm. They can. Ew, what's wrong with his eyes? <laughs> oh, that's gross. Where are his eyes? What? How did he get dead? How did? How was yeah. he killed? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we don't know all of those things, and this is called a study skin. And that's just cotton in there. All right. So it's got that nice sharp beak on him. Mm -hmm. um, so when he when he's flying around, he can unfold his wing out that far. Wow. That far. That's, he's, and he's very very agile. Mm -hmm. And you're and hanging on to this. I'm hanging on to this. Yeah. Yeah. It okay. does not get away at yeah. all. Okay. Um, and I'm losing one. Oh. Very important thing uh, for if you're a barn owl, you're hunting at night. I want one specific. I had it. What did I do? There's another feather. Here it is. On the owl, mm -hmm. this is no, that's not the one. Here, this one. He has on his. You learned. Okay, we might put this through. You learned yesterday in class about three different kinds of feathers. Mm -hmm.
What kind of feathers are these, Helen? Those are the downy feathers. And what do they do? They keep the birds warm. Yes. What kind of feathers are these? Ooh. This is a these word that's the, hard to remember. These are the, they're not flight feathers. They're not flight feathers. They're, it starts with a <coughs> C, C, contour feathers. Contour feathers. That's a hard one for them to remember. And then, off to the side, of course, are these, these big are stiff the, feathers. Yeah. And those are? Those are the flight feathers. Flight feathers. Yeah. And do you know that you can tell which wings came off of? Yeah, how do you... Uh, this, the short side of the flight feather mm -hmm. always faces forward mm -hmm. and there's a bend in the feather if they don't get mushed in the box all the time. Mm -hmm. And so this will be face up and forward. Mm -hmm. So this feather would have come off of the left wing because mm -hmm. it can't go this way. Yeah, and, so, and I'm not sure <coughs> that they will get that in the class. Do you think they... Do they do they usually recognize that when you talk about it? Do you think you, because no, in class they talk about feathers and the three kinds of feathers, but I'm not sure. And then that. mending the broken feather yeah, right. or waterproof. Right. But also with the owl and mm -hmm. only the owl, mm -hmm. right on the edge of the feather. Look at that. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Look at those little, that little fringe. Yeah. Now the owl has that. Not all, all owls have that. The owls, the few owls that hunt in the daytime don't have that. Mm -hmm. That's so that he can fly quietly. Mm -hmm. Why do you suppose an owl has to fly quietly? Well, so that he, whatever he's going after won't hear him coming. Right? That's the normal answer. That doesn't happen to be the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they fly quietly? Why do they fly quietly? Remember, their acute the hearing is oh, very acute, so and so if they they're if their flowers or if, if flowers if their feathers, feathers? were yeah. making that noise, yeah. they, they wouldn't be able to hear. They yeah. So now with that fringe, it's quiet. We have to put that in the manual. <laughs> and just for the heck of a. T I, a accentuate that. I talk in a normal tone of voice here and then I whisper here. When I'm talking to yeah, students I yeah. whisper just to kind of drive it home that they're, they're being quiet. And it's one of those, I love it because it's one of those aha moments mm -hmm, for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was just for me too. Yeah, yeah. they really, they, yeah. aha, I've got it. Like, oh. <laughs> oh! So, okay. that's really about okay. it uh, as far yeah. as the owl goes. Yeah. Barney, time to go back in the box. Good, good night, Barney. <laughs> and so while you're doing this piece too, excuse me, then the other docent is, is uh, getting the trays sort of ready for the next group that's coming? Right, okay. right. You gotta, no, because of the way we do it, we would move from this, in the same segment, we would move to the me walk okay. segment. Okay. So kind of when we're while the first docent is doing this owl lecture part, mm -hmm. then the second docent at that time is getting ready for the me walk. Oh, okay. And then when he's done, when that docent starts the me walk, mm -hmm. the original docent falls back and cleans this up and okay. gets this all ready to go okay. again. Okay. And you've got the team leader there too to sort yeah. of back you up. And it's that. really important that the the docents work together and do this. Otherwise, with our cramped schedule, we can't take time in the lectures part of it or in the demonstration part of it to do those housekeeping chores yeah, yeah. that don't belong there. Yeah, yeah. Well, when I look at my manual here, I can see in here kind of everything that you did and see how, how it works in here. Just an aside, I think it's a little bit, maybe too much for the uh, students, maybe not. Um, owls can see at night and hear so accurately because they can process sensory information at the rate of 160 frames per second. Wow. You and I can process that information at 35 frames per oh, second. No 
That's why he doesn't need to see see what he's after because his ears are so much more acute than his eyes even. Mm. That's something I usually don't, I wouldn't tell them no. because it's a little no, bit too, too much, too much information. If you happen to get a small class yeah. and you're looking for filler information, right, right. then that's the yeah. kind of thing. And that, and maybe a way to talk about that in comparison to us, what you just did, because then it makes sense. Then they've got something to think about it in terms of you yeah. know they they process information what, three or four times faster than we do. So they their do. brains get, is that what you just said? The, uh, no, the owl does. The owl does, yeah. 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 I wasn't processing information. <laughs> then if you run out of things to say, uh -huh. on the back of these sheets uh -huh. are barn owl factoids. Oh, you can always say something about them like, how many babies does an owl have at a time? It can be as high as 15. Oh, no. Really? Yeah. Man. They can, they can breed year round. They can have. So they can have babies in the They can have babies as long the as there is food and shelter available. They can have babies year round. Oh. Now, yeah. why would that be important? Hmm. Because poor Barney, in real life, out in the wild, is only going to live about two years. Oh. And who? Who? So. <laughs> So the owl goes after all these little things. What goes after the owl? Cars. Goes after the owl? Cars, yeah. Yeah. Out where I live, we have two kinds of owls, and the great horned owl is the other one. And the great horned owls are very vicious, very predatory, and they, the barn owls don't like to be around them. Mm, will they go after barn owls? You betcha they will. Wow. They'll take your cat or your puppy out, too. And the team leader takes everything home, cleans everything up, and passes it on to the next team leader. Right. So the docents who are doing it don't really have to do anything in terms of, you know, taking it home, getting it to the next person. Right. The team leaders do all that. Right. Okay. When you receive this box and then use it, and after you've had a class with it, then what should it look like when you return it? Can students handle the pellets with their bare hands? What does this chart display? How can you identify the different bones that you find in these pellets? What's important about the shape of this face? And why are the eyes so white? What did you learn about beaks of this barn owl? What are the names of the three types of feathers that are on this owl? And why are we stroking it in this particular direction? Which direction is this now? What is interesting about the shape of these talons? How are they used? Thank you, Tim, for hosting this lesson. Thank you, Helen, for being the good student. Thank you, Kathleen and John, for helping out with the camera work and the editing and the production of this video. Mm -hmm.